Welcome to High Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two curious ladies who like to cook, smoke, learn, and enjoy a meal with friends. We invite you to join us every 10 days or so here at the High Gluttony Homestead and listen to us make a mess and have a lot of fun. (laughs) So step inside, Gluttoneers. Welcome to the homestead, everybody. Hello, Gretchen. I'm so excited for today. We get to have our gluttoneers here for like a super, super, super fun recording. I know. I'm kicking myself for how fun this is going to be as far as like, why haven't we decided to do this before? Too many good ideas, I guess. We're just too hungry every other time to like (laughs) do all this prep and everything. But what are you smoking? What are you drinking? What's happening before we get down the road to our cooking? Let's do our little cocktail chat. What's going on? We'll start with my beverage today. I've got some Enkidu Chardonnay that we are Mm. enjoying. And then I am smoking Airheads Flower, which is an Indica. And it is a 36% THC, which was a bit surprising to me because I bought it without consulting what the THC percentage was. Of course, I was at the store and the guy was like, this, how about this? And I was like, sounds good. Put it in the bag. Perfect. Yes. No questions. <laughs> and what, what are you smoking and drinking today? Well, I'm laughing because earlier when you told me what you were smoking, you had said it has a really high THC of 36% or something. And I was like, I don't understand math. I don't understand how this, these percentages work because I'm smoking my, I love a Jack Herrera now. I'm so obsessed with Jack Herrera. So I'm smoking a Jack Herrera pen. And it has 93% THC. So Gretchen was explaining to me the difference of concentrate and flowers and all that. And I was like, yep, sounds good. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> you're like, I still don't understand this at all. You, what, you, what you're saying is complete nonsense to me. I'm glad you know how to make sense of it, but I like it. I'm enjoying my 93% THC and then got some lemonine, terpenaline, and pinene. And I am zeroing in on those three so far as like top faves. So and I've been seeking those ones out. That is the way we're supposed to be buying our weed now is going after what the terpenes are. I think mine probably has some lemonine in it. I want to say caryophylline, but I'm not sure. It doesn't have a terpene profile. I'm just going by what I can smell. And I'm guessing. Cool. So... <laughs> And best guess. Yeah, best guess. <laughs> and then I'm actually drinking some Forlorn Hope Chenin Blanc. You had the Forlorn Hope Verdello the other week. And mm-hmm. I was envious. I love the Verdello so much, but also I love the Chenin Blanc. So that's what I'm sipping on today. And then what are we going to be making that we're so excited about? Well, we're making appetizers. Yay! We love appetizers. <laughs> I know finger foods are the best foods of all time. I love eating (laughs) with my fingers. Therefore, I am really kicking myself about not doing anything with phyllo before because number one, so all of our appetizers are going to have phyllo. We are, we are featuring phyllo dough on this episode, the phyllo feature, the phyllo feature. And then we will never do phyllo again. No, (laughs) (laughs) now that we know it's so (laughs) versatile, we may use it all the freaking time because it's great. I, I'd forgotten a little bit how versatile it is. It's an easy way to make little like hand pie kind of things. You can just roll asparagus up in it. So you have some crunchy baked asparagus with a nice phyllo outside. That's a very popular appetizer in the catering circuit because guess what? It's fucking easy. <laughs> Well, and we were going to do that, but then we got so excited about the raw asparagus salad the other yeah. episode. So we couldn't do back-to-back asparagus, but that phyllo mm, makes it easy. Makes it easy. Because Gretchen's not making me make it this time. We got to, <laughs> I got to buy an ingredient, everybody. Gretchen didn't make me make it from scratch this time. <laughs> I have limits. And phyllo dough is my limit. All right. Ooh. Hand stretched dough so that you can read through it is my limit. <laughs> can I, I can't. I just can't. I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. Not a problem to make puff pastry. Filo dough is where they draw the line. 
And puff pastry was a challenge for me. So like, thank fuck you draw the line there because I cannot go further than that. So this is good. This is good news. <laughs> it is good news. Yeah. Especially with the stretching, like it, cause it's mostly it involves a lot of stretching and I just, I just can't. Although I did find out that you can in fact put it through a pasta machine. So I was like, ah, uh, uh, well, next time. <laughs> oh, okay. Next time. <laughs> Becca's like, no, just never, never. So maybe I'm so excited because it's not that much work today. Like we've been doing a lot of chopping up ingredients and stuff, but nothing overly complicated. So I'm so excited. Well, we are kind of going for a little bit of simplicity. And I felt like it was time to do some sort of appetizer or more of a thing that people could do at home that phyllo dough is really widely available. It's pretty forgiving. It's more forgiving than say a buff pastry in, in general. I'd forgotten that it is such a good thing to make sure to use because of all those reasons I just mentioned. And it's very neutral. So it can take a lot of different flavors. Should I get into what we were making? Then? I think that'd be great. Yeah. Tell okay. us about the, the actual, the actual tasty little pocket delicious treat things we're making. We're, we're doing that Greek classic, spenacopedic. Spen- can you please say it? Spenacopita? Spenacopita? But let's say real quick, we're going to make three different. Yes. The first one's going to be our spinach kind of based one. Yes. Spinach and feta with dill pretty much is what we're doing. Just mixing those three things together, putting them inside of the the phyllo. We're going to make a sweet-ish one with apples and cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. It's also a very cheesy episode. We've got a couple of cheesy episodes coming up. So prepare yourselves. We love cheese. (laughs) And our third one is just going to be a goat cheese with pine nuts and olives, Kalamata olives. And do not dare ask Gretchen to mix Kalamata olives and cheddar cheese because I made that mistake during our production episode and I've never seen her so visibly or audibly aghast by like a (laughs) suggestion. (laughs) So now I know. (laughs) It took me by surprise. It's not something I've ever done or ever seen anywhere. So I just was, it was more the surprise of it. I can't visualize those two things together at all. There is, we had to have an in-depth cheddar and olive conversation about that. Yes. Every other pairing we have, I think you feel really good about. But we should also say we're kind of just making these up as we go. Literally, we were just like, what sounds good together to us and what doesn't sound good (laughs) together? We are going to fold them up into three different shapes so we can figure out which is which once we bake them. So we'll be able to show you a little bit of that versatility of the, the dough. I'm really curious to hear you compare puff pastry and phyllo and kind of talk a little bit about like what makes phyllo special because I originally could not find phyllo dough and I only found puff pastry and assuming that would be fine. I texted Gretchen and said, only got puff pastry. And she said, very different. (laughs) No, it will work, but very, very different. So I said, okay, I will find phyllo dough. So tell me what, like what's going on with phyllo dough. Here's the thing. When you said that, I was like, it, it could work because it's pretty close. Once you get into it, it, you're having an open edge versus a closed edge. But other than that, it's not terribly different, like because you enclose the butter into the puff pastry. So it's it's trapped inside. Whereas a laminated. It's laminated. This is laminated. I have yeah. learned things. OK. Mm-hmm. So puff pastry has butter in between layers of dough, really thin layers of dough with layers of butter in there. Exactly. Filo dough is basically if you just had the layer part, the the dough part of puff pastry in individual layers. No butter. Wait, what do you mean? We add butter. So it's the, the dough itself might have olive oil in it, but it doesn't have butter. I mean, ah, it's so hard to tell you the difference because once I thought, I started thinking about it, I was like, it's really not that different. <laughs> <laughs> but but the it butter, is. Yeah. Butter, the way the butter is in there is different. It's is different. that like a fair to say? Okay. Yeah. So you're using melt, melted butter for a phyllo dough usually, whereas you need your butter to be cold and intact when you're doing puff pastry. 
it's just Philo's much easier. The the problem with it though is that because it is like making a puff pastry where you're going, trying to get that super thin dough layer and that's all you're achieving, rolling it out is a pain in the butt. Because <laughs> it's so brittle. It's so thin. You're you're trying to be able to read through it. I mean, that is the general rule is you have to at least be able to tell their letters on the other side of it. It needs to be super duper thin. It's such and a weird parameter for <laughs> dough. Like, can you read through this? Yes, I always read through my dough. Getting to that see-through stage is really hard. They make really good commercial variety. I mean, when I've worked in kitchens, we never made our own phyllo dough hmm. ever. I've only ever worked with pre-made phyllo dough. But did you make your own puff pastry? <sighs> Depended on the application, but in general, no. For the most part, we actually bought our puff pastry as well. Okay. Just because it is such a time-consuming thing. And mm-hmm. it's just not something you can do as easily by hand. So it sounds like what you're saying is you could spend the time to do either puff pastry or phyllo at home to make it yourself at home, but mm-hmm. you're probably not really, really, really going to notice a tangible difference when it's cooked from like, if I'm it like for me, like I yeah. probably wouldn't <laughs> notice like a huge difference. You, Gretchen's like, I would, yes. but <laughs> for me, for Becca, I'm not like store-bought's going to be delicious. So it's not really worth it to spend all that time and energy to make it yourself. Right. Especially for us today. Like we're just trying to make this like quick, delicious app kind of party thing. So right. we're just, we're just buying it packaged. We're trying to show you, I can actually do things the easy way. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. (laughs) I know. It's like, I think it's just because I feel really bad about how a couple of the last couple have gone. So I was just like, I got to make this easier for Becca. I have tortured her slightly on the last (laughs) few episodes. This has been a real journey. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. So butter is like the way the butter is incorporated so far is kind of the biggest difference between puff pastry and phyllo. Correct. And then what else should I know about phyllo dough? Well, it's been around so long that nobody's really fucking sure where it came from. Number one, this, of course. <laughs> this always happens to us. We're like, let's figure out the history. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody. Not a single fucking person. <laughs> but what did you find? <laughs> so the Greeks kind of have been given a lot of credit for it, especially because the word phyllo means leaf in Greek. And that is sort of the universal word for this dough. There are other words such as yufka, which means thin in Turkish. They're pretty sure the first time that it really came up was the Turks invented it about a thousand years ago. The Greeks have been given a lot of credit for it, but we're pretty sure they just kind of borrowed it from a neighbor. (laughs) Homer's The Odyssey around 800 BC. Something similar along the lines of baklava was mentioned in that, but it really just says bread with nuts and honey. It doesn't really say like thin layers of dough with nuts and honey. So it's like, it could have just been any fucking bread. Why are you trying (laughs) to say that was fucking baklava? (laughs) But some somewhat people have also said that it may have worked its way west from China. So might have to give credit to the Chinese, but something sort of similar came out of Egypt too. So there's no clear history. And as we know, there's just no true cuisine anywhere anymore. So everybody probably influenced each other. (laughs) Seems like the likely situation. So all of a sudden, everybody just knows how to make things everywhere. I feel like phyllo is slightly more akin to pasta dough rather than doing puff pastry in that you are just making a sheet, one sheet of dough and rolling out super thin. So you are going to work on developing that gluten pretty well. It's like a 10 to 20 minute need just to make sure you really get that developed gluten developed so that you can stretch that dough because that is the number one thing about how this dough originated was from hand stretching or at an earlier time people in turkey at least the households that would be able to afford this had two people to make their phyllo dough it was that important wow which i was like that seems right yeah (laughs) (laughs) much easier with two so the dough is made using water flour oil I did come across a Spruce Eats recipe that has a special sort of liquor in it, but it also said you could use vinegar. So like you've got that ant that uh, like when we made the dough with the vinegar, the pie dough. The pie crust. The pie Mm -hmm. crust. The pot pie. Yeah. 
And then also it used lemon juice, which I was like, that's pretty good. Cause like that's adding like a lot of nice little flavors in there. And you just mix all those things together, like a regular dough, knead the fuck out of it for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes and then let it sit overnight. After it's rested, you portion it out and stretch it out really thin. And like, you kind of use like the backs of your hands because you're trying to cheese something so thin that if you use the front of your hand, you're going to poke through the dough. So you have to use like the, the backs and sides of your hands to like pull and stretch the dough. And you would usually have like a huge flat surface. So you could just lay out this huge piece of stretched dough and then be able to work with it. <laughs> you need like at least like a good 10 square feet of space at the very least to make phyllo dough. And I don't know anybody that's really got that kind of space in their home. Like uh -uh. I would have to work really hard at getting my kitchen clean to make that. <laughs> even then, even if you did have the space, can you imagine how do you like roll something out across the 10 by 10 by yourself? <laughs> like, oh my God. There are skilled people out there that can do it with a broom handle. <gasps> I want to watch a video. That sounds mm -hmm. fun. So that's part of the trick is that you usually have like a long thin stick that you're using to push and stretch that dough too. Interesting. So you just got to keep stretching it out and then you can use it for anything. Yeah. Like, because it's neutral, sweet, savory, sweet, savory. Yeah. I mean, we had a really good time looking up recipes and then decided <laughs> to do none of them because we were going to do our own thing. Uh huh. Uh huh. But we did try to do something a little bit unusual just because it is so neutral. I mean, I was just like, let's do all Greek stuff. And Becca was like, how about we don't? <laughs> <laughs> this was, yeah, this was an interesting production meeting for us. We were like, yes, mm, no, yes, mm, no. <laughs> And I did feel that Becca's suggestion that maybe making something that was a little bit off, like the traditional things that I think of putting in phyllo was a good idea. <laughs> We're pushing each other past our limits. <laughs> you know, so growth has got to happen somehow. So. <laughs> Just pushing it. Just making it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so super versatile, super flexible and just like can be used all the time for anything and you can buy yeah. it at the store but you have to defrost it first yes one of the key things is making sure that you defrost it slowly overnight or as slowly as possible because if you try and just defrost it like on the counter you can have a buildup of moisture that comes out of the dough that like leaves the dough too quickly and then you're going to end up with a um, mushy mess because they don't put anything between those phyllo dough layers they are stacked together all together. So if there's any moisture that gets in there, it will mush into a big mushy pile. Okay. So right now mine's all rolled up in like a single little spiral. Two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I unfold it, it's not going to be individual like parchment paper between the layers of dough. It's just going to be one big piece. And then I will take off one thin layer from the top or two or whatever we decide to do. Right. But okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it, when I unfolded that, I'm excited now because it's just going to be one big, like, big yeah. piece of flour. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not one big piece of flour. Then we might right. have a problem. But right. But like yeah. archaeology. Yeah. Uh, one layer at a time. Yes. Very much <laughs> like that. I do love phyllo dough. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited and hungry, of course. <laughs> well, I'm getting a little drunk. I haven't eaten today. So I'm a little drunk. I'm working on getting high. This might be a bit of a loose episode. We'll try and keep it together for you here. That's why we were trying to be very explicit off the top about what we're doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're uh, both like, who knows what's yeah. going to happen next. So should we run through all the things we're using today and our process to get through our little appetizers that we're going to make? Yeah, I will read through our ingredients. And then if you could talk us through the steps for each one, that'd be great. One note before we get started one. on the ingredients. I basically wrote a general list with general amounts and not, this is not specific to the exact proportions that we are going to have in our dishes today. Just wanted to make that note right up front. Yeah. So, and I barely looked at the amount. Okay. <laughs> good. Like, great. Eh. Not a problem. Okay, good. You got the, the spirit of the day then, I think. So I'm going to read an amount of each <laughs> ingredient and you can decide how much you want to use of it when you make yeah. this yourself. So lovely. 
<laughs> I applaud you on your wording of that. Let's let's do this. Okay. Some ingredients for our goat cheese Kalamata one. We are using eight ounces of goat cheese and one jar of Kalamata olives, kind of, and some phyllo dough. And we're going to throw in some pine nuts in there to give a little crunch. Then for our apple and cheddar, pretty straightforward again. We've got four ounces of cheddar cheese, one to two green apples, depending on the size. And then phyllo dough again. Actually, let me back up real quick. So for our goat cheese Kalamata one, we're going to try to make these kind of a spiral pinwheel shape. We'll see what the shape ends up being. I would like to make a like a swirl, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Our cheddar cheese and apple is going to be a little like triangle pocket, Mm -hmm. kind of like what you would see with a spanakopita kind of thing. But then for our last one, our, our kind of spanakopita, we are going to use eight ounces of feta, eight ounces of frozen spinach that's been defrosted, drained and chopped. So getting all that water out of there. And then one bunch of dill. And this one we're going to make into open little crowns. Yeah. Crowns. Folded over crowns. Yeah. Okay. That's a good word. Cause I was like, it's like a tricorner hat, but then I was like, no, it's got four sides. We are not making a tricorner hat. <laughs> and then we will need melted butter yep. and we will need olive oil, salt, and pepper. I don't remember why I put olive oil on there. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll use it optional yeah. so far. Well, optional. Yeah. You can. So, I mean, you can also do olive oil in place of butter. I don't know what that would be like. I've only ever used butter. What sort of equipment are we going to use today? So we're going to use a lot of bowls because we chopped a bunch of stuff and now we have a bunch of prep bowls sitting around, but we're going to have three (laughs) bowls that we need for our main mixes. We're going to need a pastry brush, at least one sheet pan, probably more, parchment paper, a sharp knife, and we did use, are going to use two mesh strainers because you need to have already drained your spinach. And we are going to cook our apples and then try and get some of the moisture out of that. So we need those two mesh strainers to do that draining. And that's where we're at with the equipment. What are we going to start with right now? And what are our steps to make all three? Okay, so here are the things we've already done before we get into where we're going next. We defrosted our phyllo as slowly and as cold as possible. I did mine overnight in the fridge. Defrosted and drained our spinach. Right. Cut up our apples. Peeled and cut up our apples. Oh, I didn't peel. Oh, that's okay. It'll be fine. Okay. Not a problem. I peeled mine, but of course. Okay. (laughs) I mean, of course. It it makes zero difference. Okay. Okay. In in the end uh, of it all, you're going to have that, like the little bit of peel texture. That's the only reason to peel it is like, if you don't want that texture in there. So peeling, let's leave it up to you, everybody, because we're doing it both ways. We go both ways on this podcast at all times. <laughs> all the ways, all the ways. <laughs> so we're going to take those diced apples. We're going to cook them on the stove top, put them into a mesh strainer just to, to see whatever liquid comes out of them. And once they cool down a little bit, we'll mix that with the cheddar cheese. Then we're going to make our spanakopita type filling with the spinach. And we've got some feta and chopped up dill. And then we're going to make our third filling with the goat cheese Kalamata olives, which I've cut into rings. I don't know. How did you decide to do yours, Becca? Did you just chop or? Yeah, kind of a loose chop. They're just kind of like little strips almost. Cool. Whatever you want. I did rings because I was running behind. And we're going to make our three fillings. I'm sorry. I'm a little right now. That 30% THC is, uh, I'm glad I put a very tiny amount and hit it twice now. Like I'm. You're good. I'm in a good level. But if I got any higher, we would be fucked. (laughs) We'd be in trouble. So pretty much we've done a lot of prep. We've got to mix. We've got to cook our apples and then mix up our three fillings. And then we're just kind of wrapping those up in various shapes with our phyllo. Exactly. We have to melt some butter because we need our butter for our phyllo. And our ovens are preheated to 375. What do you think? We've got 47 minutes to pull this off. What do you think? Can we do it? Let's go. Let's move to the kitchen. Let's do this. First up, apples, apples, apples. Okay. And it's just the apple in there. There's no other. I'm going to put a little bit of butter to cook with, cook it with, but not a lot. What temperature? 
I've got mine on medium high at the moment just to get the pan going because I'm going to add my apples pretty quick here because we're not looking for like the pan has to really be a certain temperature, but mine's already pretty good heat right now. My new stove is very impressive with the still still getting the hang of it. Uh, (laughs) All right. So I'm going to put my apples in because my butter is sort of sizzling a little bit over here. Okay. I will too. I'm trying to cut mine into sort of a fine dice, but now that I'm looking at it, they're way bigger than I really, really (laughs) want. Oops. I'm going to add a little salt to my apples. Okay. Is that to pull out more, more moisture and flavor or both? Or we're doing all the, all the both today? All the both. Trying to decide, we didn't really add any flavor, like sweetness enhancers. That's what I'll call them. Sweetness enhancers (laughs) on our recipe list. And I'm trying to decide if we should add a little like honey or sugar. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I'm torn. Mm-hmm. maybe just like a li- like a teaspoon of honey like a very small amount of honey okay especially since we're not using a lot of apple uh you used one one apple and i used just two. one i yeah. wasn't looking for browning but now i've got them oh wow okay my butter's still melting as i told you i'm still adjusting to the stove i think i'm gonna have to swear on the fan i'm sorry i finally have a little bit of some liquid draining out of my apples oh it smells good yeah and then I don't know if we said, how long will we cook these? Will we cook them all at the same time? Can they all cook at the same time? The answer to that is yes, but we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on it. The nice thing is, is that filo dough is also forgiving, as I keep saying. And if we take it out, we can put it back in if it still needs to go further. So we could always like pull it out, take things off that are done, put it back in. We have the flexibility for that because we're doing a bunch of different things at the same time. Our phyllo is flexible too. Yes. We're flexible. The phyllo is flexible. I took my honey bottle and drizzled it a little bit over my apples. And I got to say, I like that addition. I'm getting some really beautiful honey smell to it right now. And I think that's going to be really nice with the cheddar. Oh, good. Man, my my apples must not have had much water to them because they are definitely not getting any smaller like I was hoping they might (laughs) or releasing much liquid, but I have been just sauteing them. So that is kind of the point of the saute is that it allows moisture to escape at the same time. So I I should just put this into a glass bowl when I think all the moisture has come out or as much moisture as you feel like getting out. Sure. I had had a piece fly out of the pan. Let's taste it. (laughs) Oh, oh, that's going to be fucking good. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Because I put that salt on. So you got a mm-hmm. like, nice salty note to it. I think I need a little more salt. Nice thing is the, the apples don't seem to have too much moisture to them. Mm-hmm. But I am going to let them, I'm going to see if I can get them a little bit softer. Okay. I don't know. I feel like I should be mixing our other fillings while we're waiting for this to cook. Because then this can sit and drain while we, mi- we form our other appetizers. Okay. So we have time and Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I want this to cook a little longer. So I'm going to, so let's, yeah, move on to making our other fillings. Okay, perfect. What should we do first? Uh, Dealer's choice. What would you like to do first? Let's do spinach. (laughs) Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I have my defrosted and well-pressed and drained spinach, not just drained. I did press the actual liquid out of it. I thought that might be better. Okay. I squeezed it. And then I am going to crumble my feta into this. I did take it out of the liquid that it comes in just to drain it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because that is the one problem with dealing with such a thin dough is that if you have too much moisture, it's going to ruin your life. (laughs) Now that I've got my yeah, saute, saute, saute. Yeah, I mean, these apples must not have had much moisture to them because these the apples are browning. <laughs> I'm just going to spread this out on a plate so that it'll cool a little bit quicker and that'll allow any steam to evaporate from across the entire surface of the apples as well. So spread it out for cooling and moisture evaporation. Let me spread my apple out now. And then I'm going back to my spanakopita. I've got okay. my spinach. I've got my feta in here as well. I'm going in with some dill. Are you going to do Come salt up. and pepper? Yes, I will do salt and pepper. Okay. Eh, I think I'm doing about a quarter of a cup of roughly, roughly chopped dill. I'm going to get my Luke Skywalker salt grinder out here. And then my Darth Vader pepper grinder. I've got my goat cheese in a bowl over here. So I'm actually going to add some salt and pepper to my goat cheese while I'm at it. I'll move on to that shortly after. Don't need a lot of salt in that goat cheese, though, because they've got already the salty uh, olives in there. Sure. Olives are very salty. (laughs) Yum. I'm going to say 
maybe a core or yeah, maybe a quarter of a cup of pine nuts too. Quarter cup. Okay. I'm just mixing my spinach stuff. Oh, I can't. oh you are. I'm just okay. like, well, I'm going. you're doing it. And I was waiting for you. Uh, oh, I thought you had already mixed it all. No, I was waiting. I mean, I'm mixing mine with a fork, but okay. My filling looks good. Like as far as dryness goes, I'm not seeing a lot of extra moisture. It's making it more, I'm going to use the word fluffy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that's not a problem. Let me go again with a fork on my olive and goat cheese. Oh my God. I can't wait to eat this goat cheese and olive. So glad I found that thing about the pine nuts. All right. Oh, so how warm are my apples? They're probably cooled down enough. I can touch them. If I can touch them, they're cool enough to go in with my cheese. Because <laughs> it really doesn't matter if it melts a little bit. I just didn't want it to like fully melt the uh, apple or the cheese. So I'm mixing together my cheddar and apples. Hey, I'm nice. still doing my olive and goat. <laughs> okay. So all of my fillings are ready now. So. Okay. Interesting. I think I ended up with equal amounts of spanakopita and apple. And then my goat cheese is the lowest amount. But at the same time, that's not too surprising because it's denser. It's a much mm-hmm. denser thing. It doesn't have air gaps in it. Everything's so good. I'm just like mm. tasting all of it. I'm like not, I don't know if it's going to make it in the filo. Fat <laughs> <laughs> copa does good. Oh, oh yeah. Yours is very pretty. <laughs> what do you want to fold first? Hmm. Maybe. Well, it, I have the least amount of the olive. Okay. Same. So maybe so that, first. Do that first. That yeah. I think that will be the more complicated of the items. Of them. I'm going to cut my sheet into quarters. Quarters. Okay. Mostly because I have a big split sort of in the middle anyway. So. <laughs> Might as well let the do, dough do what it's going to do. Let the dough do naturally. Number one, make sure you hold the pa- pastry sheet when you start to brush it. <laughs> okay, Good to know. Because if you don't, it just sticks to the brush. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can get a swirl. Is that enough butter to melt or should I do more? Let's start with that. Lots of experimentation going to be happening here. So I ended up putting the end that doesn't have as much filling in it as the outer part. Okay. For the first one. Okay. It's going to be a little bit of trial and error to do like a (laughs) pinwheel type thing. I got to say, I'm glad we're doing this one first. This one's going to be the hardest. Our Tootsie Roll. Our Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll. Which is weird because a Tootsie Roll isn't really, I mean, it's a round shape, but it's not really rolled, is it? I have no idea. I was just thinking of the wrapper of a Tootsie Roll. I know. (laughs) That's actually a good comparison. There. So what am I doing with this phyllo? Take a sheet. Very gently lay it down. Butter first before you do anything. So we're gonna take right, one so you sheet. You took you took one sheet, laid it out on a cutting board, and that full sheet you're buttering. Yes. Okay. Step one. Yeah, I'm just gonna watch you do this. Okay. Don't soak. You're not trying to soak your sheet in butter. I really just want what the brush can provide here. So I need okay. a thin layer and not, ev- not even necessarily a fully like covering layer. Just just dip your brush in the butter and then start swiping and yeah. you don't have to like overdo it. Then we're going to go pick up a second sheet. So this put is that a, on top of the butter. Put that on top yeah. of the butter. We've got two layers. Okay. Then second application of butter. So same process. Then okay. once we've got our sheet buttered, Instead of trying to individually butter each strip, now we'll cut it after this should make uh, our and then wrap a little easier. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. Okay, then split down the middle and then this and a quarter and a quarter. And I'm putting my filling at kind of a odd angle here. <laughs> like I started about four fifths of the way up the roll and I'm not quite going to the opposite corner. So it's at a bit of an angle. Take it from the back quarter, fold that over the filling, pull it up over and then just gently roll. Okay. Two sheets is really good because that gives you a little bit more support. And I am twisting the end and then folding the end in. And then I'm going to just roll this around. Okay. I think I got it. Yeah. I got to butter my first one. Uh, My dough still split, but oh, sad. Hopefully it'll be okay. Okay. So I think I overfilled that one. Also just making this shit up as I go. So if you find a method for you, sure. Go with it. Okay. I think I'm going to need more butter. Duh. And I know in this situation, there's, well, there's a a too much butter situation. Yeah. But But it's really only when, you know, it makes it so that you can't handle your dough. Sure. I think maybe if I had rough chopped my olives also would have been a good idea. That makes sense. 
right? So this time I'm try I'm flattening it a little bit. Okay. Oh, I don't know what this is going to be like when I try and roll it. <laughs> so then once you uh, like make the shape, are you putting it right onto a parchment line sheet pan? Okay. Yes. I am going to brush them with butter on the top. Yeah. Now I'm going to kind of smush it out flat. I've got all kinds of ideas going on over here. Okay. And I won't know which one is which after I get it out of the oven. Yeah. <laughs> Rolls are hard. Okay. <laughs> I'm done with that nonsense. <laughs> I'm not done with the filling. I'm just going to not do rolls anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> New plan. New plan. Okay. Yep. Rolls are super hard. Mine exploded out the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make like a little bit of like a kind of like a cigarello kind of shape type yeah. thing. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's just going to be kind of a, a long and skinny thing. Uh-huh. That sounds nice. <laughs> Yeah, fuck this roll shit. I'd already did six of them, but I'm like, now I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, I think I'm only going to have like four big ones. Hey, it's all good with me. They're doing all kinds of fancy shit, like tying them up with leak ribbons and stuff like that. And I was like, uh, no. Mm -mm. That sounds very pretty. Not interesting. Very pretty. Very fiddly. Not (laughs) not something I'm interested in doing. (laughs) I don't know what this shape is that I just did. I have no idea what that is. It's my last one, though. Interesting. All right, Spanakopita, let's do it. (laughs) Next, yep, that is not shapes, but that's okay. (laughs) I don't know what these are, but you know what? It's going to taste good. It's going to taste great, yeah. Okay, Spanakopita is next. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to layer four sheets together. Okay. I think I'll cut this into thirds and in half. Okay, okay. I I need to melt some more butter. The most square type square. So I've done brushing with my third layer of butter. I'm adding my fourth layer of dough. Okay. More butter. I'm not even sure if we really need to butter this one because the filling is just going inside, but oh, but I did. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll always take the butter. It's not a Yeah. It's problem. not a problem really. So I'm cutting it down lengthways in half first and then the long, and then by thirds across the shorter axis. Oh, these are going to be fun. So far, this has been the faster of the two to make. Three minutes left, Becca. Do you think we can do it? <laughs> yeah, totally. We got this. Three minutes. My uh, phyllo is very brittle on the edges. As, as it starts to dry out, that will be a problem, but yeah. it shouldn't be too noticeable. Okay. We're moving pretty quick through here, so hopefully you'll get through without too much of an issue. Because yes, when your when your sheets of dough are this thin, this is the other drawback is that yeah, as soon as it starts to dry out, it gets pretty brittle. You could also like fold the plastic up around it when you're not working with it, and that'll help oh. keep the edges a little bit, you know, uh-huh. but a little bit more moist. Yeah. Okay. I did take it out of the packaging. plastic. Yeah. But... The stuff that it was rolled in. Yeah. Okay. Spinach triangles. Squares. Squares or triangles. Spinach just... squares. That's okay. right. Yeah. Spinach square. Like, wait, am okay. I doing it wrong? No, you're doing it right. So thirds and then in half horizontally. Like, yes. Okay. The longer way. And then thirds the shorter way. Got it. So these are big. Yeah, these are gonna be bigger, which I think is okay. Yeah. So my sheet pan is full. I'm gonna brush okay. my the tops of mine with butter and put them in. My spirals are already unspiraling. Okay. Mine's a little more like Monty. <laughs> Then that's okay a triangle or a square we'll call it yeah it's fine it's all good whatever you yeah. like okay. whatever works for you yeah. i'm doing i'm baking half of mine with the seams up and then i'm gonna bake the other half with the seams down Ooh, that's fun so, so just to see what i like better that's cool i like that and i'm going in with my first tray so that doesn't have any other apple cheddar no okay and then how long are we cooking these again 15 minutes Okay, to start. Got to get another sheet pan out. I can keep an eye on those while they're baking. I know that when we originally talked about doing these, I had Uh said to do one layer of dough. Uh But considering how much dough I have left and how the other things have benefited from having more layers, I'm going to do three layers of dough and then fold the cheese up inside. I like that. And this one's going to be long strips that we're going to cut it into. I think I'll do, maybe do thirds again okay let's see how this ends up going but as you can see you can kind of do with it what you will it's super flexible like yes use me as you will (laughs) three layers for our apple oh i should put my first tray in yes we are also six minutes past time which is not too bad considering 
I have so much puff pastry and phyllo now. Like, I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> hand pies for everyone. Yay. I do love hand pies. I was going to say, it's a good way to use up like leftovers. If you ever have something that you like, you ah. know, kind of like have little protein or, you know, obviously like you know, veggie or something. Yeah, yeah. Veggie, you know, a few different veggies that are kind of left over that you can chop up together. And yeah, these are going to be huge as well. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I want to see you do these ones. Okay, playing fast and loose with the rules here. I don't, not sure what I'm doing with these, but whatever gets to a triangle, right? Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try making it a little smaller. Okay. Narrower strips. Can't oh, make you did little guys. Littler. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll do quarters again on the next round. So, okay. So much filling left. Yeah. Oh, how are my things doing in the oven? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh cute. Oh, they look good. Oh, cute. <laughs> I forgot how cute Philo can be. <laughs> they are very cute. There's a lot of butter coming out. I guess I put yeah. butter on. No, that that's, that's okay. the, the non-laminatedness of it is uh, okay. It's gonna go everywhere. I see. Should I put my apple ones in? Just go with them with the other ones in there too, or wait? Oh, you can put them in at the same time. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I got five minutes left on my first tray okay. before I'm gonna check them. I mean, I think they'll be pretty much there though. Yeah, they're looking pretty well done. I am all assembled and then all in the oven. Oh, wow. Go you. Go me. Well, I made big ones. You know, I like to do that. Because right, right. That's much easier. <laughs> You're like, uh, no, I will not be doing any of this. You're like, I'm redoing this and making them smaller. And I'm like, mm, no, no. In the direction. no, I'm going to make them huge. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if you're all ready to go, no reason to not put them in. You did put them in, right? Yeah, everything's in. So go you. All right. What do I do with my phyllo that's now? I mean, I know you were saying like, what do I do with this? But like, how do, do I put it back in the fridge or? Yes. Yeah, you can keep okay. it in the fridge. I would try and use it within the next two days, probably. Okay. Okay. It might smell really good. I think these are done. Ooh, those are pretty. Going in with my apple. Okay. I guess I'll go for another 15 minutes because that seems to have done the trick. You want to see mine? Beautiful. Yeah, they look really good. Those look so tasty. Pinwheels look a little rough, but uh, <laughs> the Spanakopita look great. <laughs> Is that your first tray or your second? My first tray. Can I show you? Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh, they look so good. <gasps> the big little pockets. <laughs> the pockets look awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I like oh, that packety yeah. look. That looks so great. I thought, thank you. Man, I feel like these are cooking even faster than the last ones. <laughs> they're they're apple. Start, yeah, they're starting to brown a bit. Maybe because they've been pre-cooked or you just mean the, the phyllo. Oh, well, that is possible. I mean, yeah, it could be just that they, I mean, the other ones didn't take that long to cook really. I think maybe my pinwheels needed a couple more layers. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't think I'd do those again anyway, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. They're just a little, like, I was like, maybe I should put them back in to crisp up, but I'm afraid if I put them back in, they'll just, the crisp. cheese will just melt, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. God, these look good. I want to stuff this all in my face right now. <laughs> I know. So I think my apples will be done soon. Yeah, mine are at least halfway done, like halfway fully cooked. I'm going to turn mine actually around so that, oh, because I think the ones in the back are cooking a little quicker. I'm going to try one of my pinwheels, maybe, if it's not so hot that I can't die or that I will die. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> Needed so a couple, couple more layers of dough, but the fla- I love the flavor. Yeah, you were really excited about that one, the olive oil, or olive and goat. I just love olives. Mm-hmm. Probably didn't even need to salt them. They're a little salty. Yeah, I forgot to put pine nuts in the mix, so I was just adding them when I was filling it, and I think I forgot to put them in one of them. <laughs> How is it with the, them kind of on the top, then? Kinda. I kind of squished, like pushed them in a little mm. so they're not like totally on their own. Yeah, I like these. Mmm. It's bad. Copita are so good too. <laughs> Monte Copita. Monte Copita. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me these apple ones. I need to try them right now. Okay, I'm pulling my apples. I'm so, I'm very tempted to pull mine too. I think they're done. They're pretty. They have juices coming out of the corner though. We'll see how it is. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah, I'm getting those out too. That was only 11 minutes for those guys. That's quick. So our first round of baked items took about 15 minutes, pretty much exactly, to bake. And then the, the apple ones baked in 
11 minutes. So that was a nice surprise. Even my big guys. So cute. Mm -hmm. And you've tasted everything but the apple so far. Yes. And I have to still taste mine. Well, you better taste them. I know. I love smelling the dill. Okay, here I go with the spinnacle pita first. Oh my God. Gretchen. I know. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so good. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Okay, I gotta try olive. Come here, you little olive. Mm. Yeah, oh my I God, the olive. I love oh the olive. With so much butter. Mm. So good. Oh my gosh. And we're only 30 minutes over our sl- a lot of time. But we did have them fully made in, almost fully made in time. So that's pretty good. We just hadn't factored in the baking, probably because I hadn't really thought about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't considered at the time. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we just have to taste our apple and then we've got our appetizer party going. I'm going to cut one of these in half because just to see how the steam is on the inside. Okay. Mm. Oh, so good. Yeah. <gasps> Are you glad we added the honey? Mm-hmm. It just like adds like a nice floral note to it. Mm. Okay. My first bite was all phyllo, <clears throat> which tasted delicious, but I'm going to do another bite now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So good. We did awesome. Go us. Wow. Wow. Filo dough appetizers. Accomplished. Do mm. you, do you how? so, oh, I think we forgot to give you, give a world level assessment. Oh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Which I definitely think this is, you know, a two. It takes a little patience, but not, nothing that's extraordinarily difficult. I agree. I think I initially was thinking two to three just because of the couple of steps, but it's not hard at all. It just is kind of like a patience thing. Yeah. But, oh my gosh, so good. I'm so proud of us with our menu selection and our Mm. filling assortments. They're so delicious. Yay. Yay, we did it. Mm. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on our Philo journey. Uh, Like and subscribe. We are on Facebook and Instagram for the most part. (laughs) uh, Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Another super fun adventure. And you can find all of our thoughts at highgluttony.com. And like Gretchen said, we're on some of the socials, but we've been not so great at that lately. Not so great. Just listen, but tell people about us. Thank you for following us. Thank you for joining us. And off we go. Off we go and get the fuck out. (laughs) You gotta eat. Yeah. Oh, hungry.